Let's watch LeBron throw the team under the bus. Just the Opening Brian, question. Every season's different. Every series is different. But two years ago, you sat at your locker for 45 minutes with a towel over your head after the game. I didn't tonight. You're, you're in here already. Can you just go through your emotions in the moment and how, how the, it sounds silly how this feels? Um, well, for me personally, um, I left everything on the floor every game, all five games. So for me personally, I have nothing to be, I have no reason to put my head down. I have no reason to look back at what I could have done or what I shouldn't have done or what, what I could have done better for the team. I left everything I had out on the floor every single game for five, five games in this finals. And, um, you know, you come up short. So, I mean, it would be the same if you feel like you wrote the best column of your life and somebody picked another one over you. That's a, how would you feel, you know, Jason? So, you know, you you wouldn't hold your head down, but you'd be like, okay, it's just not my time. So, um, you know, Golden State is um, a worthy opponent. Obviously, been the best team in our league for the last three years. The best team this year, and they showcased that throughout the postseason. And um, we were another opponent in their way. Um, you know, it's just you know, it's unfortunate for some of the guys on our team that's never. You know, never been able to you know, get this far and not be able to host a trophy up. And um, those are things that kind of bother me more than anything. Um, you know, guys like Kyle and Derek and Darren and, you know, you know Kay and, and Eddie. So, um, emotions all over the place right now. I know you guys are obviously competitors. You think you could overcome everything. Was there ever a point in the series where you felt overmatched? Like you weren't going to be able to do this? Um... No, I don't think I've ever, not one time that I feel like we were overmatched until probably, I looked at there was like a minute 20, and we were down 13, I believe, right, or something at, at that point, and I was like, okay. Uh, we left everything on the floor, and it still wasn't enough. Um, you know, so, you know, it's, they assembled a great team. You know, we was able to get them last year, and they went out and got, you know, one of the best players that this league has ever seen, you know, so, you know, they did a great job, of, a great job. Their front office and and their players by doing that recruiting the things they did in the summertime and obviously they paid dividends. Dave, Dave McFadden, ESPN. LeBron, 32 years old, 14 years in the league, and and now there's this team out west. You know, that been to the finals two of the last one, two changes in the last three years. How do you view them when you look at what's your future in the league? Um. Well, I mean, that's a it's a two sided question because for me personally, um, I, I don't know. I don't. I need to sit down and you know figure this thing out, you know. And um, so I, I don't know, you know, as far as me personally right now. Um, but as far as that team, I'm, they're going to be here for a while. They're going to be around for a while. Pretty much all their guys are in their twenties. Um, you know, pretty much all their big name guys are in their twenties, and um, they don't show any signs of slowing down. So. You know, there's going to be a lot of teams that's uh, trying to figure out ways to put personnel together to try and match that if they're able to actually face them in a playoff series, both Eastern Conference and Western Conference, uh, because they're built for, uh, you know, from my eyes, they're built to last, you know, in a few years, you know, so um, let me see. Brian, standing on the right. Brian Winters, DSPN. LeBron, um, you said... Uh yeah, you have a sense of history about this. You have your triple double in the finals, never been done before. You referenced maybe the best. Is this your best series you've ever played? Um, I don't know. I mean, this is um my eighth trip to the finals, and um, I've had some some pretty good ones, um, you know, in my day. And um, like I said, I just try to do everything to try to help this team win and more. And. Um, for me to go out there and for the guys that, that allowed me to be the leader that I am and allowed me and trust me that I'm going to make the right plays and I'm going to do the right things and have the right intention. Um, you know, that's a, that's a, it's a compliment to my guys. It's a compliment to the 14 guys that allowed me to do that and the coaching staff. And I just try to put in the work. I put in the work individually. I put in the work in the, in the film room. I put in the work in my mind and my body every single day to prepare myself for whatever um, whatever obstacle that, that this ball club um you know, in, entails and does it always result in us uh, a winning? Uh, no, but it's my third year here and uh, we haven't won every game, um, you know, 
know, we haven't won every finals, obviously. We've lost two of them, so. Um, but like my, you know, like I've always told myself, if you um, feel like you put in the work and you leave it on the floor, then um, you can always push forward and not look backwards. Second row on the right. LeBron, Dave Lewis, and we've seen his radio. You mentioned all the energy you exert, and obviously you work so hard. What do you plan on doing? You've lost two of them. For a while, and how long before you, you know, recharge your batteries and get back at it? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I probably won't stop working out. I, I think it's, just, it's a lifestyle for me, so I'll probably be back in my gym in the next couple of days just because it's just who I am. As far as being back on the basketball court, I'm going to take a while. I don't need to be back on the basketball court right now. I need to get off of my feet and, and, and let my joints and let my body kind of recover from being out on the floor um, for 14 straight years, you know. So, um, But I'll train. I'll train all summer. It's just a part of who I am now. It's just a part of my lifestyle. Jay, standing on the left. Jay, not ASPN, LeBron, five years you broke through, got you, five years ago you broke through, got your first championship against Kevin Durant. Uh, having those burdens and those expectations to finally achieve it, I'm wondering if you could offer your perspective what you think it must be like for him having experienced something like that yourself. Uh, it's a great feeling. You know, when you're able to uh, work hard, uh, you're able to put in the work and, uh, and accomplish a feat like that. It's something that we all dream about, you know, growing up in our inner cities, um, you know, along, along the hard work and you know, through high school, through college, if you went to college and through the NBA, you always hope that you'd be in a position to be able to uh, not only compete for a championship, but win a championship. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great feeling. First standing in the back club. Chris Haynes, ESPN. Bro, obviously you can't control where free agents go and teams get stacked or whatnot. How would you look back at this season? How, how can you assess this season? Uh, our team, our ball club? Yes. Um, we had some good times, we had some bad times, we had some times where, you know, the biggest thing of this season is we weren't able to get healthy. And when we finally got healthy, the playoffs was right around the corner, and we right around the corner, and we showed what we're capable of doing. We got a full unit. Um, it would have been great to see us at a full unit throughout the whole season so we can continue to build and build the camaraderie and build the chemistry out on the floor. So, you know, you don't have to wait till April to see what you're capable of doing. And, and yes, we were able to hit the switch, but. You know, those games in January, those games, you know, in November, you know, and the games that people think that's not important, uh, they're important to me. Um, and they would have been important to our ball club, but whatever, we figured it out and got to the postseason as a two seed. Um, we controlled home court and was able to win on the road in the Chicago Finals in Boston. And we was able to punch our clock into competing for a championship and as a ball, as a ball club and as an individual. So you want is an opportunity. Um, you know, obviously, we ran against, a, like I said, a worthy opponent, uh, one of the best playoff teams that this league has ever seen, obviously. And uh, we weren't able to get over the hump and accomplish what we ultimately wanted to do. Um, but there's no such thing as a, a failed season when you put in as much work as we've done individually and as a ball club um, since since September, since late September. Rachel and Eric, last two. Brian, you just said I need to take some time and sit down and figure this thing out. Big picture, Warriors, all of that. Does it feel like the puzzle pieces are out there? You just can't see them yet. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> um, I'm not the GM of the team, and I'm not in the front office. And but I know our front office is going to continue to try to put our ball club, put our franchise in position where we compete for a championship year in year out. And, and like I said, you know, um, teams and franchises are going to be trying to figure out ways that they can put personnel together the right group of guys together to be able to hopefully compete against this team. Um, and like I said, they're assembled um, as as good as you can assemble. And I've played against some really, really good teams that was assembled per, uh, perfectly. And uh, they're right up there. So um, we will see. Um, but I will I will get away from the game a little bit. Um, I'll probably watch some WNBA games, though. I can't get away from my I'll probably watch Columbia. Sun's tournaments this this summer, so I'll be a part of the game. But as far as me actually playing, I won't. I won't be a part of the game much this summer. Eric, last question on left side. Hey, LeBron. Uh, Eric Pinkett's Basketball Insiders. You've been a part of two super teams: the one you have here, the one you had in Miami. Uh, looking at what the Cavaliers, have, rather the, the Golden State Warriors, have done, are you still a, a fan of the concept? Do you think it's a good thing for the NBA to build these teams? How they brought in Kevin? And you get what I'm asking? Um. No, not really. I don't, I don't believe I've played for a super team. I don't, I don't believe in that. Um, I believe we're a super team here. Um, 
So no, I don't really. I don't. You guys want one more question before I leave? And I'll see you guys for a long time. Robert, last one in the middle. Uh, Robert Latow, Black Sports Online. Um, it was mentioned before that Kevin Durant lost his first NBA Finals when you won your first NBA Finals. Kind of fast forwarding to right now, how is he a different player and a different person since you do uh, know him personally? And even though you're, you know, obviously you're upset because you lost, how do you feel about you know him winning that first championship? Um, well, I'm not happy he won his first. I'm not happy at all. And, um, you know, I, but at the end of the day, from where when I played him in the 2012 finals to now, I, like I said, experience is the best teacher in life, and he's just experience and experience and experience, and and it, and it also helps <laughs> when you were able to experience some things with the, with this team as well. You know, he felt like he needed to uh, reassemble and reassess his career and and come here. You know, so um, you know, like I said, the the you know. Having, you know, getting that first championship was, for me it was like having my, my first son. You know, just a proud moment. Um, it was something that uh, you, you, for, you know, never never forget. And at the end of the day, nobody can, um, no matter what anybody say from now on in your career or whatever they say, they can never take away from you being a champion. That's was something that they always going to speak about about you. Um, it may, may be like the last thing they may say, but... You know, they always gonna have to say that you're a champion, and um, you know, like I said, when you put in the work and, um, and and things pay off, then you can always be okay with whatever else that happens in uh, in your career. Thank you, LeBron. Kyrie will be next. Uh, just a reminder, we got a bunch of seats. Okay, so this bum comes out here, throws his team under the bus, and makes it all about him. Well, I did what I was supposed to do. Never heard that from another superstar going to the podium. He goes out there and talk about what he did. Told you he's nothing but a stat chart filler. He gonna be, well, I averaged a triple-double. Congratulations. How's that working for you? Did this man just say he lost two NBA finals? He don't even know how many he didn't lost. Boy, you are three and five. Get in the house. <laughs> Eight trips, and you thought you, you thought you only lost two. Is that what he said? Maybe he confused. This beating is too too much for him. He can't take it. Boy, get in the house. Mm, mm, mm. Well, now he out here looking like Freddy Krueger with the dog on shirt on. I don't know what to say for this boy. I'm, I am going to not miss you when you are gone for the summer. Then all these little bum fans of yours can go on and disappear too. So as LeBron walks away from the podium and fades into the dark, fade into the black, we move on. I'm out.